G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist and I'm coming to you today with a video about one of my personal road bikes. That's right, I still ride the pavement from time to time with my mates. This is what's considered one of my training bikes, so to speak. It's an older Calfi Luna Pro. Calfi still sells this bike, it's known as the Luna Classic these days. It's handmade in California. In fact, if you check the link in the description below, you can see my factory tour video at Calfi headquarters. This bike is interesting. I'll cover the details shortly because it has quite the mixed drivetrain. There are parts by Campagnolo, FSA, and Shimano. So let's start off with the frame and fork. Beautiful Calfi Luna Pro, clear coated. It's in a lot of use. It's got some battle scars and so on, but this frame still ticking along, no worries at all. And mated to this bike is an American made wound up composites fork, handmade in Utah. Straight blade, gloss over the carbon. In fact, wound up will make anything you desire. I had them produce in the past for me a one inch disc brake fork, which is nigh on impossible to find for an old cow for you used to own which unfortunately I sold. It was a Calfi cross bike. You can check that out in the link below. It was one of my first bikes into the more gnarlier side of gravel and adventure cycling. Continuing on, pairing the frame and fork together, a multiple color Chris King headset. I absolutely love Chris King headsets. They're bomb proof, reliable. They come in a ton of colors. You just press them in. In this case, this is a bike that uses a traditional headset pressed in headset cups. Bearings are so good that it lasts forever. It would be remiss of me if I didn't mention my two little friends joining me today during this video, Tuesday, and well, there goes Dixie hopping off. Anyway, Tuesday's my little tripod friend. Back to the bike. The drivetrain, as I mentioned earlier, is a mix of components. The actual shifting components are by FSA, namely the FSA Wii semi-wireless electronic drivetrain. And this is a drivetrain that I have reviewed already on the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel and website. It was part of a gravel bike review by Linda Ray. That's linked below. I acquired a pair of rim brake shifters. So this utilizes mechanical brakes, obviously, rim brakes. No disc brakes on this bike whatsoever, but semi-wireless drivetrain. So these are FSA K-Force Wii shifters, and you can see in the video below, assuming you like to watch that, how these work and how they differentiate from other electronic shifting platforms. But long story short, you've got batteries, a CR2032 in each of the shifters that communicate wirelessly to the front and rear derailleur. In fact, the new Shimano Altegra and Dura-Ace drivetrains borrow from this concept of semi-wireless. So the derailleurs, which I'll cover shortly, are linked together by a cable. Another cable links the battery, so they're completely separate from the shifters. So you lose some wiring, which is kind of nice, especially if you'd like to build your bike from scratch. Handlebar on this bike is by sister company to FSA, Vision Tech. This is their Metron Aero handlebar. Now, Aero, you think, why the hell would you want to run that on a bike designed for training? But this was from the review bike I had earlier. I managed to hang on to these components for future use. It's got a swept forward design. It's very comfortable. Handlebars are a personal choice, of course, and it has a compact drop, which I absolutely love, compact drop. It kind of astounds me how I managed to ride deep drop handlebars for so long. The handlebar measures 40 centimeters center to center. I prefer a narrow type handlebar, preferably with no flare. My review of the Linda A bike I referred to earlier featured an FSA stem but unfortunately, that was incompatible with this bike's steerer tube. This fork is a one inch steerer tube. That's how it used to be, a threadless one inch steerer tube. So I had to go back to an old favorite, the Ritchie WCS, which I had to use with a little shim because this stem is an inch and an eighth, but the clamping mechanism is 31.6 millimeters. And this being an aero top handlebar, all of the cables will run internally even though it's just a training bike, so to speak. The shifting components, FSA Wii. 
you don't see that too often. So the front derailleur is the brains of the operation. And again, if you want more details of this drivetrain, check it out linked in the description below. But this drivetrain could not be run one by if you decided to go down that route. You need the front derailleur. Like I said, it's the brains of the operation. It's how you perform some of the configuration of the system and so on. So the front derailleur works flawlessly. No worries at all once you've got it set up. And the rear derailleur, again, FSA Wii, and it will shift up to a 32 tooth cog. Now the rear derailleur does not feature a clutch, but somehow we've managed to get through much of our cycling lives up to a couple of years ago without a clutch. The FSA Wii system is very interesting. It's good to see another player on the market. I mentioned this in my review. I felt the FSA Wii system was a little bit unfinished. It was not quite there, but I do sincerely hope the FSA continues developing this drivetrain and perhaps produces a 12-speed variant. It would be great to see another player in the electronic drivetrain market, giving the big names some competition and so on. Now, in this circumstance, this 11-speed system is paired to a 1225, so I've got a really tight cassette, and there are rolling hills down in this neck of the woods of North Central Florida, which brings me to my chainring setup, and you might notice it's by Ken Pagnolo, namely the timeless, the beautiful, record square taper aluminium crank set. Now, typically, these came with a 53 39 or a 5242 or a 5239 chambering setup, but I like to run a 50 most of the time with a 39 around these neck of the woods. But I thought, well, let's try something different. So I acquired a BBB chambering, which is 48 teeth, and slapped that on there. So I've got 48. 39 chambering so obviously it's going to favor some leg speed especially if you get the speed ramping up and so on but pretty nice little chambering setup now on to the bottom bracket hidden away from view is the beautiful record square taper unit with a 102 millimeter axle these bottom brackets are absolutely bomb proof no worries at all granted you know they may not be as stiff so to speak or the crank for that matter as some of the bigger axle bottom brackets you see today in 2022 and so on but for my amount of horsepower being pumped out no worries at all and they were good enough for mario cipollini back in the late 90s etc so they're good enough for most riders i suspect thankfully speedplay lives on speedplay was purchased by wahoo who are very famous for their line of computers this is the wahoo speedplay zero pedal so it features a stainless steel axle and of course your classic interface with speed play pedals most of the action with speed plays relies on the cleat itself this is a double-sided pedal and i've been using the original speed play since 1995 i just love that design they're very lightweight they do require a little bit of maintenance with the cleats in particular but it's super easy to use the brakes these are by trp this is the 960 model in very fetching red, which I think looks quite lovely on this bike. They're a dual pivot brake. They work fantastically with these levers. Very easy to configure. There's a nice little quick release mechanism to make wheel removal super easy in a nice barrel adjuster for bringing your rim brakes further or closer away from the rim itself. Plenty of modulation, plenty of power and so on. C-Post is a Campagnolo record knockoff. Now, when I say knockoff, I would ordinarily use a genuine Campagnolo record seat post, but before I built this by Lucky C in its current configuration, it was built with the original Shimano Jira Ace 7970 Di2, and I did some tricks with the traditionally external battery to have it hanging behind the seat post. So I didn't really want to drill holes into a proper record seat post, so I had a knockoff and drilled a hole or two and ran some wiring inside the frame and had the external battery sitting behind the seat post. But inside that seat post nowadays is an FSA battery for the Wii system. Atop the seat post is a Physique Arione saddle, which once upon a time was my go-to saddle, but there are more and more choices these days, thankfully. Nowadays, my saddle of choice is the Ergon SR Men's Pro. You can check that out in the link below. There's also a ladies version as well. Saddles are a personal choice, obviously, so that may work for me, but it may not work for you, but it's worthwhile checking out regardless. Onto the wheel set, and it's a beautiful hand-built special. These are Stan Snow Tube Alpha 340. I don't believe these are made anymore. I had these wheels built many years ago with Dura-Ace 9000 series hubs. Laced 32 spokes front and rear with DT Revolutions, three across in the front, 
DT revolutions on the non-drive side, competitions on the drive side with brass nipples on the drive side, alloy on the non-drive side, and on the front, alloy nipples all round. They're actually quite a light pair of wheels and bomb-proof reliable, and this was one of the first rims to be tubeless compatible, which leads me to the tires, which are the American Classic Timekeeper, the 700C by 25 model, and I have reviewed this tire, and you can check that linked in the description below. Fantastic tire, rolls fast, it's very well priced at US $35. What's not to love about that? It's on par or better than many other tubeless tires on the market for half the price. No brainer. And holding the wheels to the bike is a set of NV quick releases. This is before the time of through axles and so on. On to bottle cages, and this wouldn't be an American themed bike if it didn't feature American made bottle cages. These are by King Cage of Durango, Colorado. My go to bottle cage for anything really. Titanium bottle cages, I believe these are about $60 US, but they are the best going if you have to use a metal type bottle cage. They don't drop bottles, they're just so good. People are going to balk. 60 bucks, you know, when you fork out a decent amount of cash for a bike finish it off right. So there you have it, another video concerning one of my personal road bikes. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for content such as this, no bullshit gravel bike reviews, product reviews and other madness, including these dogs running around the place, etc. I'll see you in the next video.